Hi, I'm Claire Chance, Senior Pastor of Avondale United Methodist Church. Today is Maundy Thursday, the day in which Christians remember the night that our Savior Jesus Christ gave himself up for us. We remember how he humbled himself in service to his disciples, washing their feet. We remember how he introduced our sacrament of communion, helping us to understand that his human death was not the end of the story. Listen now as our praise band tells us about our God's sacrifice in the song, Man of Sorrows. And as you listen, grab a cracker or a piece of bread and a drink so that you can join me at the communion table later in this service.
Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that often our spirit has not been that of Christ, where we have failed to love one another as he loves us, where we have pledged loyalty to him with our lips and then betrayed, deserted, or even denied him. Forgive us, we pray. And by your spirit, Lord, make us faithful in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. But Christ suffered and died for us, was raised from the dead, and ascended on high for us, and continues to intercede for us. Believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God for that.
Listen now to the story of Maundy Thursday from John 13. It was before Passover, and Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and to return to the Father. He had always loved his followers in this world, and he loved them to the very end. Even before the evening meal started, the devil had made Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, decide to betray Jesus. Jesus knew he had come from God and would go back to God. He also knew that the Father had given him complete power. So during the meal, Jesus got up, removed his outer garment, and wrapped a towel around his waist. He put some water into a large bowl. Then he began washing his disciples' feet. And drying them with the towel he was wearing. But when he came to Simon Peter, this disciple asked, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you don't really know what I am doing but later you will understand. You will never wash my feet, Peter replied. If I don't wash you, Jesus told him, you don't really belong to me. Peter said, Lord, don't wash just my feet then, wash my hands and my head. Jesus answered, people who have bathed and are clean all over need to wash just their feet. And you, my disciples, are clean. Except for one of you. Jesus knew who would, would betray him. That's why he said, except for one of you. After Jesus had washed his disciples' feet and had put his outer garment back on, he sat down again, and then he said, Do you understand what I have done? You call me your teacher and Lord, and you should, because that is who I am. And if your Lord and teacher has washed your feet, you should do the same for each other. I have set the example, and you should do for each other exactly what I have done for you. And now I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. If you have love for one another, then everyone will know that you are my disciples. In Mark 14, we hear of the first communion meal that was shared on that Passover night so long ago. During the meal, Jesus took some bread in his hands. 
He blessed the bread and broke it. And then he gave it to his disciples and said, take this, it is my body, which will be broken for you. Jesus picked up a cup of wine and gave thanks to God. He gave it to his disciples and they all drank some. And then he said, this is my blood, which was poured out for many people. And with it, God makes a new covenant with humankind. From now on, I will not drink any wine until I drink new wine in God's kingdom. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. May God bless this reading and guide our understanding of the Holy Scriptures. Amen. Don't miss the message that is meant for you personally in these scriptures. First, Jesus taught us by his own example that we are called by God to serve one another. We are meant to seek out those who hunger and thirst for food and water, as well as justice and righteousness. We are to help everyone we can in every way that we can. That's what it means to be a Christ follower. We do not live in isolation from the world. We're meant to be an active part of helping the world to be a better place. And secondly, Jesus is telling you that your God loves you so much that God gave his only son that you might come to know God better. Jesus died so that the sin that would separate us from God might be washed away, forgiven, so that our eyes would not be clouded by our own wrongdoing. Soren Kierkegaard, the Dutch theologian, explained the purpose of God sending Jesus to us, even though it would end in Jesus' painful death. He explained it in a parable about a handsome and wealthy prince who was looking for a wife to love. In his travels about the kingdom, he saw a lovely peasant girl whose eyes were wise and whose smile was kind the prince began to think that she was the one woman with whom he could find true happiness. But how could he begin a meaningful relationship with her? After all, his wealth and position separated him from her everyday life of a peasant girl. He wanted her to know him and to love him for who he was, not for his position. He didn't want to command her to be his wife because that would be about power rather than love. So the prince took off his royal robes, and he dressed in farmer's clothes. He moved into the village where the peasant girl lived so that he could come to really know her, person to person. Over time, the two young people discovered all the things they had in common, and they grew into a deep, loving relationship that would last forever. Kierkegaard wrote, this is exactly the gospel. The Prince of Peace himself, Jesus Christ, laid aside his robes of glory, garbed himself as a peasant, became a human being, and moved into our village, onto our planet, to woo us to himself. Even though this choice would result in a painful end for Jesus, he gave himself that we would know God's true character and our purpose in life. Jesus said the most important way we could follow him is in loving God with all that we are and loving other people as we love ourselves. Let us devote ourselves to that commitment once again as we share in the holy meal. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord, amen. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord ascended, he promised to be with us, always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. And Christ will come again. Let us praise God in thankfulness for our Lord's everlasting love as the band sings, God So Loved.
love in the depths of your heart and soul and may you be blessed today and always in the name of the creator the son and the holy spirit amen join us for easter services on sunday at 10 o'clock at avondale you can find us online at youtube at aumc jacks and you can come in person on the corner of talbot avenue and herschel in jacksonville we'd love to see you